Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Today we have an array of holiday recipes for you, all made by our very own chefs and a special guest chef, Bill Wargo from South Burlington, whom we'll meet in just a moment. Along with Bill, I'm joined with Carolyn Peak from Williamstown, of course, and Marco Aiello of South Hero. Great to have you here as ever. And this is our last recipe program for 2019. And before we get to the food, we want to highlight this month's free drawing. It's for the Full Color Delicious Pastries Cookbook. The 95-page book has a range of pastries from the savory to the sweet. And as always, the drawing is free. I'll let you know how to enter at the end of today's show. So on to recipes. It's great to have Bill Wargo here, um, here, who is uh, an award winner, a culinary award winner from the fair, the Champlain Valley Fair, for his quiche Lorraine. This is absolutely beautiful, and that is bacon on there. Correct. Right? Yes. Awesome. So, so tell us, you know, was this your first experience with culinary competitions at the fair? No, I uh, first uh, entered culinary competitions back about 10 or 15 years yeah. ago. Um, this is my first first prize win, um, and I've had yeah. a few second place uh, accomplishments. One of which was a bison uh, stew. Another Ooh. was a, uh, uh, a cherry pie made with uh, Rainier or white cherries. And but they came in second place, so this is my oh. first. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about Quiche Lorraine and and why this is an award winner. Right. Well, um, what I wanted to do when I found out that the uh, fair was doing a quiche contest uh, this year was to go back in time. And so I went back to um, the uh, New York Times from 1958 or so when Craig Claiborne, who was the uh, food sure. critic uh, for the Times at that point, did an article about how quiche was slowly coming into the American food scene. And I uh, read his article uh, and followed his particular recipe, um, which was a custard kind of quiche. And then I also added the uh, bacon lattice, since it's a quiche Lorraine, which contains right. onions and bacon. Right, it's absolutely beautiful. And why do you think, so this is, it's interesting, quiche, they're, they're like, some are very custardy and some are more right. eggy, I guess. Yes. Um, so, but you chose this one. Was that part of the one. winning thing, do you think? I don't know, but I hope so, yeah. Um, what I wanted to do, well, the uh, two qualities that the fair emphasized were taste and appearance. And the appearance, um, I decided to, um, uh, do the lattice for and the uh, taste what I wanted to do was to do something kind of rich and that's mm. why I went with a custardy kind of uh, filling. Right well I just I love quiche and I, I think you know they, they can be complicated or people can can be I'm not so sure about that right. um, but it's not too bad of course I cheat because I get the crust I mean I think it's mm. all about the crust but I get the crust store-bought so tell us about you know what is your advice for people who want to make quiche? I think the best advice is to uh, be patient um, and to uh, <laughs> choose the kind of quiche that you really want to eat, whether it's the egg kind of quiche that you mentioned or the custard kind of quiche, which this is an example of, and uh, just do what you want. You know, have fun and, and enjoy the final product. So you can shift things around a, a little bit in sure. terms of how much milk, how much egg, yeah. and, and that's what determines, but you can't and go other ingredients really too, crazy like bacon wrong. And, cra and onions right. and so on, yes. Right, you can, you can add a lot to them. Right. So, you know, there's all this teasing about you know, quiche and who doesn't eat quiche and who does right. eat, eat quiche. Right. I mean, I love it. I do and don't too. you think that's just gone by now? I hope anybody. so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anybody, anybody can eat quiche and anybody right. can really make quiche. Was there a secret about your uh, crust? No, no secret there. Okay. Mm. okay. All right. Well, well, Bill, thank you so much for bringing this quiche in. Congratulations you. on your award. And we will go on to uh, Carolyn and her okay. recipes thank for you today. For thank you. Well, I'm planning for company. So that's what everything I have here is good if you're doing company. So my first 
recipe is honey garlic glazed meatballs. And these are just your standard meatballs. They've, they've got the, um, you know, the regular eggs and milk and, and ground beef and everything. And then you make a sauce with garlic and butter and ketchup and honey and soy sauce. And I'm going to put a few of these out on a plate, if I can keep from knocking them off onto the table. And then to kind of give it a little party way to it, I'm going to stick some colored toothpicks into them. And people can just come along and pick up what they want and be all set for a nice sort of, like I say, a, an appetizer. Now over in this area, I have bran refrigerator rolls. And I guess I'll bring this out in front, so maybe they'll show up a little bit better. Um, these, these are really neat to make because you just, you make your dough and then you put it in a bowl and put it in the refrigerator. Now it said overnight, but I guess my bowl was a little small and I almost had dough all over the refrigerator. But these make a really nice one and they've, they've got the um, bran cereal in them, so you've got something that's, you know, a little more than just plain rolls. So that's a really nice thing to do. Now in my slow cooker, of course, I have a slow cooker Alfredo green bean casserole. I'm going to set these back over here because I want to have my green bean casserole be able to show it to you real well. This is a little different from the one that you find in the magazines. This is one that has the green beans, but it also has water chestnuts and um, roasted red bell peppers. It has um, uh, refrigerated Alfredo sauce, and then of course the uh, French, French fried onion rings for it. So there we go, now we can get a good look at it. And it's a, it's a really nice way to be a little different. This one is made in the slow cooker or the crock pot, so it's all set to go for, you know, you get people there and they can come in and take what they want and go sit down. Now my last recipe is a special, I'm not going to call it a dessert because this is sort of like walk by and grab one. These are saltine toffee bark. And it is so much fun because you lay out 40 saltine crackers in your cookie sheet and then you mix sugar and butter, melt that, and get the, the sugar all dissolved, pour it over the crackers, put it in the oven. I'm going to let Marco come in and I'm going to finish telling him how to make it. Mm -hmm. You put it in the oven till it, and bake it till it bubbles a little bit. Then you put on a, a bag of chocolate chips spread them over it. Put them in a nice dish? And yes, but first you've got to put a package of uh, the chocolate um, English toffee bits. Okay. Or you could put um, crushed candy canes or something. Well, since you said that, um, you know, you walk by and get one, I should take the whole container uh, uh, but when I, I, I walk my, by. I want my dish back. Okay, I'll send the <laughs> dish back. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. You're welcome. Okay. So the holidays are fast approaching, and I can't believe that we're already doing our um, last show of, the, of 2019. And this year I decided that for, um, for the holidays, uh, you know, we always have a lot of leftovers. So my recipes this month are actually focusing on what to do with the leftovers. And I'm going to start with this ham and cheese pinwheels. They're so easy to make. Um, it's basically just your um, regular crescent roll that you put um, ham, the John mustard, and Swiss cheese on it. And it's so tasty, so easy to make, and it's a great way to use some of your um, leftover ham in, in case you had ham. You could actually substitute for turkey. And um, you sprinkle it with um, onion powder and poppy seeds, and you have a full meal if you put some uh, greens in there to go with it. So I really hope you try this recipe. It's a, it's a great way to use some leftovers. And it's good, probably gonna make it to your regular recipe rotation. Uh, for my next recipe, 
I figured that one of the most things to do around the holidays is to bake desserts and share it with family and friends and neighbors. And something that is fun for the whole family is, and a good way to keep the kids entertained is decorating. So I made this Christmas light cupcakes and they're gonna be a hit. You, make the cup, you can make the cupcakes from, uh, from scratch, but you can also you know, just use a box um, mix. And then the frosting is a uh, very uh, nice and fluffy mixture of heavy cream and cream cheese. And um, as you can see, they resemble little um, string lights uh, for the holidays. So I really hope you give this recipe a try. And over the years, we've had this tradition here in Across the Fence of doing a cookie platter. So this year for, my cookie, for the cookie platter, I uh, made three different um, cookies and they're great for gifts from the kitchen. Um, the first one is this thumbprint cookies. They're your basically shortbread cookie that is crumbly and light and you can use any jam you like uh, or a combination of them. I actually have raspberry and strawberry here. And for my second cookie, we're gonna turn this around and I have these frosted eggnog cookies. And I like eggnog, so I figure I will love it in a cookie form and I was not wrong, because these are delicious. Um, like I said, it's also your basic cookie that you then frost and decorate. And the last one, mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. is this chocolate chip toffee bit yeah. um, cookies. Cookies, so, so for forget yeah. the meal. I know, right? <laughs> Just go straight to the dessert. <laughs> Thank you. This is an amazing holiday spread. Thank you all to all of our, um, our chefs. And as always, we have a couple of different ways to get the recipes that you've just seen. To get them online from our Across the Fence website, go to uvm.edu slash extension and click on the link to Across the Fence. You'll find today's recipes and our complete recipe archive. To get the recipes by mail, send $2 in a stamped self-addressed business envelope to Holiday Recipes. Recipes, Box 188, South Hero, Vermont, 05486. Please remember, if you are ordering the recipes to include $2 in a self-stamped addressed envelope and send it to Holiday Recipes, Box 188 in South Hero, we will use your return address for the free cookbook drawing. And even if you're not ordering the recipes, you can still send along your name and address to be entered in the free drawing. We'll leave that information on the screen while I mention our next edition of Recipes with Across the Fence will be on January 2nd. Our chefs will feature favorite recipes for 2020. For all of us, best wishes to all of you for a fun and safe holiday season. Thank you all for joining us Across the Fence and thanks to all of our chefs today. It's awesome. I'm Fran Stoddard. Thank you.